Unless you're someone who loves tinkering with cars, the word sequential transmission probably sounds complex to you. However, you likely do know the term manual transmission. While you're driving a car with manual transmission, it uses the clutch and shifter knob to move the car through the gears, where you can go from first to top gear, and also in reverse gear. I know a lot of you guys love to drive a manual transmission. As you see in this post 60% of you guys voted manual. But I got most of the comments to do a video on sequential transmission, so here it is. If you haven't watched our video on types of transmissions, you can watch it here if you want. A sequential transmission is similar to a manual transmission, but it's a bit different. Sequential manual transmission is a type of non-synchronous manual transmission used in variety of vehicles, but highly used in a motorcycle and high-performance racing cars. If you have ever ridden a motorcycle, you know that the manual transmission in a motorcycle is nothing like this. You shift gears by clicking a lever up or down with your toe. It is a much faster way to shift. This type of transmission is called a sequential gearbox or a sequential manual transmission. So today, in this video, we'll discuss about how sequential transmission works. Also comment on what topic do you want to see the next video. Let's take a look at how can you change gears in sequential transmission. In a car with a manual transmission, you shift the car through the gears in an H pattern. The top left position is first, and then you move straight down to second. To get to third, you shift up, to the right and up again. Fourth gear is straight down from third. Another right and up shift for fifth gear. And all the way down for the reverse gear. This is exactly what you do in manual. But in sequential transmission, gears must be selected in order, as it will not allow you to skip any gear like a traditional manual transmission. The method of switching gears is unique to this transmission, where a selector shaft is used to upshift or downshift. In a vehicle with a sequential gearbox, you just hit a lever or a paddle to click through each of the gears in order, whether you are upshifting or downshifting. A sequential gearbox works the same way as a regular manual gearbox. There is still a set of gear selector forks that move collars to engage gears. The only difference is the way the control rods are operate. In sequential, the H pattern is eliminated and replaced with a different motion. In vehicles with a sequential gearbox, the driver either pushes the lever forward or pulls backward to shift up or shift down, it depends on the type of gearbox of the vehicle. Let's take a look at how gear shifting works in sequential transmission. If you are in a second gear, and you want to go to third gear, you simply need to pull the shift lever backward. And to go from third to fourth, you need to pull the lever backward again. To go from fourth to fifth, you press it backward again. It is the same motion every time you change gears. To drop back down a gear, say from fifth to fourth, you push the lever forward. In Formula One cars, there are actually two paddles on the sides of the steering wheel instead of a shift lever. The left paddle upshifts, while the right paddle downshifts. On a motorcycle, you do the same thing, but instead of moving a lever back and forth with your hand, you move a lever up and down with your foot. Why every race car uses the sequential approach rather than the H pattern? There are four main reasons for this preference. The sequential shift is quicker. For example, if you want to go from second gear to third gear on the H pattern, you have to push the lever up, over and up again. That takes time. But on a sequential transmission, you simply push the lever up for every gear you change. The sequential shift is consistent. You don't have to think like, let's see I'm in second gear, so I have to go up over up to get to third. It's confusing some time, but in sequential you simply push the lever forward. It's the same motion for every gear you change. The sequential shift has no surprises. If you miss shift with the H pattern in a race, for example, downshifting to second when you meant to go to fourth, it is possible to blow up the engine. That can never happen with a sequential gearbox. The other advantage is that the sequential shift lever takes up less space in the race car cockpit. 
You only need space for the forward and backward motion of the lever, not left and right. Nearly all race transmissions use the sequential shift approach. The drum is rotated manually by a lever in the cockpit, or it is rotated by solenoids, pneumatics, or hydraulics that are activated electronically. In the electronic case, the driver has a pair of paddle switches on the steering wheel to control the mechanism and never have to move your hands from the steering wheel. Because of the advantages of the sequential approach, this type of transmission is starting to appear on cars in the high-end tuner market. A sequential manual transmission is not to be confused with a Tiptronic sort of automatic transmission. The Tiptronic system may duplicate the shift lever motion of a sequential gearbox. However, because a Tiptronic transmission is an automatic transmission at its core, it still has the torque converter and usually does not shift as quickly. How Sequential Transmission Works on Bikes Sequential transmissions are the norm with motorcycles, but they are quite rare with cars. Most motorcycles have a non-synchronized 5 or 6-speed gearbox with a manual clutch. The gearbox is operated with a gearshift lever, which is moved with your foot. So, in order to shift up a gear, you open the clutch, put your foot under the lever, and pull it upwards until it stops. Then you release the clutch again. In order to shift down a gear, you push down the lever. If you are a little bit experienced, shifting up is also possible without the clutch, just put some load on the lever, then briefly close the throttle. The drivetrain gets unwind for a moment, and the next gear kicks in. In order to shift down without clutch, you need to have very much feeling for adjusting the motor speed. Out of that reason, the industry has developed quick shift mechanisms, which allow shifting up and down without a clutch. A sequential gearbox has one odd problem, you cannot see which gear is engaged by the position of the gearshift lever. But most modern bikes have a gear indicator in the cockpit, which shows the gear that is currently engaged. Are sequential transmissions faster than other transmissions? As you can see many high-performance car uses dual-clutch transmission. That's because they offer smooth performance and lightning-fast shifts, especially at high speeds. But do you know what is faster than DCT transmission? It's sequential. Sequential are significantly lighter and often more compact. And most important the dual clutch uses helical style gears and a sequential has straight cut gears meaning less power loss traveling through the transmission into the axles it also uses dog teeth connectors to get from one gear to another forcing the gears together instead of smoothly transitioning from one to another dog gears reduce less power than synchromesh ones because of these benefits sequential transmissions are still commonly used in racing Plus, every manual shifting motorcycle has a sequential gearbox. Almost every race car is equipped with a sequential gearbox rather than a standard manual transmission. This provides a number of benefits. Take a look at a few of them. Shifting gears is easier. The sequential gearbox does not require you to stop or slow down in order to change gears. Thus, you are able to increase or decrease your speed without stopping or experiencing a drop in speed. The mechanism is uncomplicated. In an H-pattern shifter, you have to be extremely dexterous to operate the gears. In a sequential gearbox, you simply push the lever upwards or downwards and the gear will have changed. You do not have to overthink and keep the gears in mind because of the simplicity of the mechanism. The gear changes occur sequentially. The mechanism is aptly named because you can change gears only in sequence. Jumping gears is impossible since you do not have direct access to each individual gear, as in a manual transmission. Smoother shifting. A sequential gearbox also prevents you from jumping gears when you are upshifting or downshifting. With a manual transmission, you can skip right from first to fourth gear if you want, though you will likely get some pushback from the car. With a sequential gearbox, you have no choice to skip gears. 
You have to move through each gear, and you'll enjoy much smoother shifting and performance. So that's it, thanks for watching, if you still have any questions, or I've missed anything then let me know in the comments. Do tell me on what topic do you want to see next video.